Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. If you've been following my channel, you know I'm going through a no-buy period where I am refraining from purchasing anything new for six months in the categories of makeup, skincare, perfume, clothing, shoes, and accessories. Part of this process has also included going through all of my stuff, it's a lot of stuff, going through my stuff and I'm trying to determine what is still good, what stays and what goes. And in the process of doing this, I've been going through my old makeup and I've noticed that I have a lot of really good makeup that I like that is locked and trapped in palettes that maybe have other makeup in those palettes that I never use and never reach for and therefore those palettes kind of stay on the back burner and I never reach for the really good makeup inside of them. So recently, I went through all of the palettes that fit that description and I popped out the makeup that I actually like to use and I put it into this magnetic palette, referred to as a Z palette. What this is, is a little palette with a magnet at the bottom. I found one of my old Glossier stickers that I had from an order and I popped that on top of it, but it would normally have the logo Z palette here. And in the back of this palette is a magnet. All of the makeup that I wanted to pull out of palettes happened to be in a metal pan, so the metal pan's just automatically, magnetically stuck to the back of this palette. But this also came with a bunch of stickers with magnets on them, so if I did have something that didn't have a metal pan, I could have adhered a sticker to it and then popped it right in. So today's video will feature me talking a little bit about this palette I put together, showing you um, how it looks when I put this makeup on, and also sprinkled here and there, I have some kind of current event stuff I wanted to talk about to share with you and just sort of check in. So if that sounds good to you, please stay tuned. First things first, I wanted to say thank you so much to all of my returning and to my new subscribers. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button. It really helps keep me going. Thank you. So the Z palette is not a new thing at all. These have been around for a long time, but it's new to me. I've only recently learned about this and I wanna talk about what I put in my palette. What I have here are products from three companies only. I have a bronzer and a blush from Benefit, Hoola and Dandelion. And I have the monochromes from Glossier. I'll put a card up to my review of these eyeshadows. When Glossier released their eyeshadows back in the fall, I, I picked up these colors. This is, um, it's a little bright here. I picked up these very pale, pale pinks and then this sort of dusty lavender tone. And then here are five, five shades from a six pan mini palette from Pat McGrath. So first, let me show you the palettes these came out of. So the Glossier monochromes, if you watched my review or if you're aware of these otherwise, they come in this little, little box that, you know, they come in a tray that fits in here and then there's a mirror and this mirror can pop out. And I found this to be kind of bulky. It also allows you to pop out the tray and put in a different tray so you can switch out your eyeshadows. It sounds like a good idea in theory, but in reality, it means I never reached for them. So before I let them go bad or just ignore them completely in my stash, I decided to pop them out and see if I use them in this palette. So the bronzer and blush came out of a Benefit palette. You may maybe have seen these before. I bought this at Ulta. So this palette, it's kind of destroyed now, but these came, so originally the bronzer was in this box and then the blush, the dandelion was here. I went to go buy another full-sized dandelion and I was interested in Hoola. I'd heard a lot of good things about it and I was looking for the right bronzer for me. And this palette with those two items in there, it was only slightly more to buy this palette with these three other products and I got sucked in and I bought this giant palette. And it did, it did work for me. I did use the dandelion and the hula for a while, but eventually it kind of was bulky and, I, and it went to the bottom of my drawer. Finally, these eyeshadows here are from a mini Pat McGrath palette. This was my first Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette and there are six pans in it. The only one that I didn't pop out to use is this bronze shade. And I'm not giving up on it entirely because there might be a day when I kind of learn how I, I can use this shade. But 
I did find that the other shades that were in this little six pan palette were super wearable for me, especially these two pinky purple shades. These are lovely. I kept the brown one in only recently because I, I like how deep this shade is. And then the gold is great and a black is always good, especially because I like to use black eyeshadow as my eyeliner. So I'll demonstrate quickly what I did to get these out. So if you look at this palette here with this last remaining bronze shade, I used this tool. This is a tool that is meant for depotting. And you can see it's got a nice kind of flat blunt end and then a pointed end. And what you can do is you can insert this little tool into the space between the pan and its container. And if you're, if you're lucky, you can pop it right out. But once it's out, once it's out, in this case for this Pat McGrath one, there was glue that was glued to the base of this palette, which is paper. And so what I did was just get a cotton ball with alcohol and softened up the paper and was able to kind of scrape the glue out until it was clean. A little more rubbing alcohol to get all of the adhesive out and it was clean as a whistle and ready to pop into this magnetic palette. Once I put it together, I was so mesmerized by how pretty the purples and the pinks from the Glossier shadows looked next to the next to the Benefit dandelion blush and the bronzer. And then I really loved how these Pat McGrath shadows played into it as well. And here's what I found. This has been really super useful and I wind up reaching for this all the time. I put this palette together before I took a trip out west. I was visiting my mom. I didn't need to bring all of my makeup. I just needed a little bit that I could put on every day to freshen up my look. So I found these to work really well. I actually have ended up liking these Glossier shadows more than I expected to because of how uh, soft they are and they're not that pigmented and they do provide a pretty natural wear finish. The Glossier shadows have turned out to be really useful. I especially like the, the shiniest of the pinks. I love to have that shade on even if I'm wearing virtually no makeup for a no makeup look. That really shiny pink shade works really well on my lid just to add a little brightness. But then I found that when we wanted to go out for a nice dinner or kind of I wanted to add a little more glam to my look, these little Pat McGrath shades were right there to help me deepen my crease and add a little definition along the lash line and add some high wattage shine with this gold. And I've been super happy to be reunited with the Hula Bronzer and the Benefit Blush the, in Dandelion because those are our shades. You can tell based on the fact that I've hit pan there that these are products that I love and they work really well for me. On my, on my face I have a NARS Radiant Primer. I've got the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Foundation in Nude Ivory. Uh, precisely my Brow Benefit Eye Pencil in the gray color right now. I'm trying to make that one work. And I've got a little uh, Glossier Boy Brow in my brow hairs. And I believe that's all I've got going on. I've got a little bit of lip liner on as well. I'm using the Fenty Beauty Eye Base as well. Starting with the light pink matte from the Glossier Monochromes. Applying that all over just to even out my skin tone. I find that this shade is the equivalent of my skin tone. It doesn't add much more. And so if I end up using this matte and then I use the bright shiny pink over it, it really is a no makeup makeup look where I don't, you can't really see that I'm wearing much, but my eyes look more even in tone and a little bit brighter. So I've really been enjoying using this particular shadow wouldn't have done it without this palette. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the Pat McGrath, this deeper shade in brown. I'm just gonna pop that into my crease right now just to create a little bit of depth on both sides. You know, the, these, little, these little Pat McGrath shades were kind of like my, my gateway drug into Pat McGrath. I don't even believe this particular palette is still on the market. And although it's not on the market, it is in my collection. And it was at risk of being decluttered because I wasn't ever using it and it was completely out of mind. I'm going to this shade right here. I don't know what the names are. This is no longer available on the market, but what this is is a beautiful warm pink shimmer. Okay, so I saw over this week some news that the fashion designer Tracy Reese, who I've always loved, she did a lot of work with anthropology. I have at least one dress from her from anthropology. She is collabing with Naturalizer Shoes. 
I actually used to work a naturalizer. It was one of my first major jobs. When I was 15, I might have been 16, but I think I was 15, I started working at a naturalizer shoe boutique in the mall in my suburban community in Minneapolis. And I sold shoes at naturalizer for three years. It was my part-time job all through high school and then a little bit in college I would come back during breaks, summer, Christmas or whatever and I would come back to work at Naturalizer. And I actually loved it. Of all the jobs I've ever had in my entire career, I've never enjoyed a job on a day-to-day -day basis more than I enjoyed selling shoes at Naturalizer. Part of it is I do love shoes and I loved, um, I loved it when the new shipments would come in and we would get big boxes full of all the new shoes and we'd try them on. It was kind of funny as a high schooler to sell shoes there because Naturalizer has always had a reputation as being like a mature woman's shoe store. And it absolutely was at that time too. Our primary clientele were like career women who were looking for high quality shoes to wear to work that they could wear all day long. And even more mature women, my grandmother loved to shop there too because they had, you know, kind of like some standard loafers and wedge shoes that were really reliable and super comfortable. And so we had super loyal clientele. Anyway, even as a young person, although um, it wouldn't be an obvious choice for a young person to work at Naturalizer necessarily, I could always find something I liked to wear. Naturalizer taught me the value of a well-made, very comfortable pair of shoes. And I've honestly been a Naturalizer customer ever since. I have a few pairs right now. Um, so the idea that Tracy Reese was going to be collabing really got me excited and I had a panic moment. I'll put some pictures of the shoes up on the screen. My first impressions of what they look like were that they seemed extremely accessible shoes to wear to like a wedding event or a party or a church service, like that type of thing. I, I liked some of the bright metallics and I loved some of the fabric used you know, to create ruffles on the shoe. These are very summery, kind of vibrant, expressive shoes, and I think they look really great, actually. I was happy to see this. I didn't see anything in the collection that I must, must have. If I hadn't been on my no-buy, I think I would have bought maybe at least one pair, maybe two pairs. But because I'm on my no-buy and I was really just observing this collection, um, as someone who likes Tracy Reese and likes Naturalizer and was curious to see how those two brands would come together, I did think that this was a really interesting collab and I'd like to see more of this going forward from both brands actually. I would like to see Tracy Reese continue trying shoe styles and I would like to see Naturalizer do more to collaborate with fashion designers to bring a little bit more of a high fashion edge to their extremely comfortable, kind of reliable shoe lineup. Okay, now I'm just going to pop a little bit of this high shine pink right over the top of what I've done here and just blend this out. I find that this particular shade can tone down, can tone down some of the color differences if I have a really rich color that might be overwhelming and make it a lot shinier but still a little bit more natural looking. So I'm finding this Glossier High Shine shade to be super, super useful. I'm down to my last open and like potentially almost expired mascara. This is Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara. This is a super high glam mascara. I used this in my um, summer, my video from last summer where I was trying out Hutopian Dream. So this one's old, it's been open now for like eight months at least, but it's hanging in there. I'm going to use this until it's unusable. I'm going to start with the bronzer. So you can see I've already hit pan on this. I, I definitely use Hoola bronzer to bronzer. I like these dense but still fluffy angled brushes for the bronzering. Okay, I'm bronzed for the gods, and now I'm going to go into this little bit of dandelion here, with that little blush brush from Hakuhodo. And what I like about dandelion, like I said, is that it provides the most subtle little light pink. I think for a lot of skin tones, this would not be um, even detectable, so I think you would need to have light to light medium skin to have dandelion show up. One thing I like about it is that it has no shimmer. I don't always dislike a shimmery blush. If you do have mature skin and you have some, some fine lines here, a shimmery blush can often bring attention to those. Maybe sometimes you want to draw attention to your crow's feet. 
and maybe sometimes you don't, but I like having an option. Just a nice matte blush in a, in a cute pink, which is what dandelion is. And I feel like a little on my chin, a little on my nose. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So that's it. I made myself a little palette out of makeup that was otherwise going completely unused in my collection. I absolutely love how the palette looks. I find that I have a really hard time looking away from it. When I do open it, I stare at it. I think this color combination is so pleasing. It's so satisfying to see the pan emerging on these cheek products. I almost never hit pan on eyeshadows, but it's exciting to see it here on these products. So this is a very fun and good way to rescue some of your really good makeup that's otherwise going to waste. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you like the look. This is a very like common everyday look for me. Please let me know in the comments. Is this something that you've tried before? Are you familiar with these? If not, are you curious at all about the opportunity to build your own palette? Anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there and I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.